Greetings, dear viewers. The engine of the motorcycle, or rather the two motorcycles that will be discussed in this segment, is unique because each connecting rod has four pistons. You may have recently seen a similar creation on the Garage 54 channel. However, in this episode, we will talk about a motorcycle enthusiast, the German Dieter Hartmann Vertvini, about a man who, being confined to a wheelchair, created on the attic of his house an eight-cylinder marvel, the Ducati Eleanor. Previously, he refined the technology on a Honda Monkey motorcycle, converting its single-cylinder engine to an inline-four. This interesting story is what we'll talk about in this video. You're on the Kras Moto channel. Enjoy watching. Fifteen years ago, in 2010, at the Intermont exhibition in Cologne, the German motorcycle enthusiast Dieter Hartmann Vertveen presented his Ducati Eleanor motorcycle, which was designed based on the production Ducati 900 SS. While the Ducati chassis remained unchanged, instead of the classic Ducati V-twin, oh, sorry, L-twin, an eight-cylinder V8 was installed in the frame, and it was a very unusual V8. The thing is, the engine crankcase, as well as the crankshaft, and two connecting rods, and the gearbox were all retained from the Italian brand's two-cylinder power unit. However, the addition of four cylinders in a row and connecting four pistons to one connecting rod ooh, deserve detailed analysis. And even before Eleanor, he designed a four-cylinder Honda Monkey using the same scheme. Madness or genius? It's unclear what motivated Dieter to create his unique motorcycles but he's clearly not crazy. This German's mind works perfectly. Dieter, an engineer by training, managed the assembly line at a car factory for years. In his free time, he loved motorcycles, as do his wife and son. In the early 90s, he converted the power unit of a Spanish Boltaco 370 from a two-stroke to a four-stroke using a cylinder from a Ducati and designing the cylinder head himself. The 2nd of March, 2002, divided the German's life into before and after. While riding his Ducati 900 Supersport to work, he slipped on cold asphalt, injured his back, and was left permanently in a wheelchair. However, Dieter did not lose heart and continued working on various engineering projects. For example, he modified the cylinder heads of old BMW R50S motorcycles, e converting them to a four-valve system. The idea to create an extraordinary inline-four engine that would use a single connecting rod from a standard engine came to Dieter in the mid-2000 SSE. The certified mechanical engineer says this idea came to him while looking out his attic window onto the street. His windows overlook the parking lot of a grocery store in the small town of Rimbach. The four-cylinder Honda Monkey project was, let's say, a practice run before creating a V8 from a Ducati engine, 50 square meters of attic space in his house, a lathe and a milling machine, a computer, and several hundred kilograms of metal parts, along with skilled hands and a bright mind, were enough to bring his idea to life. Monkey 125 FO project launched in March 2007. Dieter designed the engine on his computer every day. Two months later, the stock monkey power unit was removed from the Mokik, and the engineer began turning his idea into metal. Most of the components, such as the cylinders, rocker arms, connecting rods, camshaft, and so on, Dieter made entirely by himself. As for the system for connecting four pistons to a single connecting rod, which then directly transmits the force to the crankshaft, Dieter patented it. The patent application was filed on September 18, 2008, and granted on March 10, 2011. In this configuration, the two middle pistons are attached directly to the main connecting rod, which splits into two at the top, while the two pistons on the edges are connected using four small connecting rods. And oscillating rocker arms are connected to the inner pistons. Thanks to the oscillating rocker arms, when the second and third pistons reach top dead center, the first and fourth are at bottom dead center. 
the displacement of the monkey's inline four engine is 125 cc, which means each cylinder is just 31.25 cubic centimeters. Dieter had to use pistons from a brush cutter. The cylinder diameter is 35 millimeters and the piston stroke is 32. In some articles, you might see the cylinder diameter listed as 25 millimeters, but that's a typo. A year after the project began, the four-cylinder engine was completed and was started on the test bench. Cartman Vertfin supplied the engine with a standard Honda carburetor, only replacing the jet with a higher performance one. The engineer's first start was nerve-wracking, as anything could have gone wrong and the engine might have fallen apart on the test bench. Dieter anticipated material defects, miscalculations, lack of lubrication, any possible issue. He was genuinely surprised that the engine started on the first try. Two days later, the four-cylinder engine was back in the monkey's frame. The supermarket parking lot across the street became the place for the first test drive on Easter Sunday, April 27, 2018. Dieter's son Fabian does a few laps while the designer himself records a video. It's very unusual to see this mini bike that sounds like a sports motorcycle. Dieter estimates the power of the 125cc engine at around 6 to 7 horsepower, and the top speed that this monkey 125FO reached was about 80 kilometers per hour. But for the enthusiast, power and speed weren't as important as the very fact that his invention worked. Training was successful, and it was time for a more serious project. Dieter pulls the cover off his Ducati SS, the very one he had his road adventure on, and starts turning it into a V8. To achieve a similar engine displacement to the original Ducati, Hartman Vertvein chose the following cylinder piston group dimensions. Cylinder diameter 56 millimeters, piston stroke 44 millimeters. Four small pistons together weigh less than one 900 cc piston. The V8's displacement was 868 cubic centimeters. They had to abandon the desmodromic valve drive. Dieter used a simple valve timing design one camshaft with rocker arms and two valves per cylinder. The engine's estimated power was 70 horsepower at 9,000 revolutions per minute. This information is taken from the official website of Dieter Hartmann Vertbein. This V8 fit perfectly into the standard Ducati frame. And the most incredible thing is that this V8 uses the crankshaft and two connecting rods from a two-cylinder engine The main idea was that at low RPMs, Dieter's creation works like a twin with a 90-degree cylinder angle, which means it's very well balanced. At the same time, the engine can rev like crazy because of the lower moving masses inside the engine. However, there's another side to the coin. The design is complex. It includes more parts, and this setup is also more expensive. A single connecting rod in a four-cylinder engine faces higher loads, causing more lateral force on the pistons and reducing engine lifespan. The eight-cylinder Ducati project named Eleanor was completed by early 2010 and showcased at the Intermont exhibition in Cologne, where both the Ducati Eleanor and a kinematics animation were presented. Of eight pistons, rocker arms with connecting rods, two main connecting rods, and a crankshaft. While working on this story, I had the honor of communicating personally with Dieter via email, and I want to pay tribute to this man who, despite a serious injury, did not give up and created these two masterpieces of motorcycle engineering. Without huge budgets, without a team of designers and engineers in the attic of his own house, the unfortunate fact is that Dieter cannot ride his own creation. His idea did not receive further development apparently because his engine design does not offer any radical advantages. This is the story of the German motorcycle enthusiast and his unusual motorcycles. At this point, my story comes to an end. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to give it a like and leave a comment. 
Share the video with your good friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There are some pretty interesting videos about motorcycles and more coming out here. This was Crass Moto Channel with you. See you next time.